uh, together with the uh, measures the Chinese uh, government has taken. And uh, a little bit about uh, you know the situations in my council district, and uh, also uh, what we have been doing as a council general here. Uh, I got uh, you know two titles. One, uh, of course, is the council general uh, in New York. That's my formal title. But since I served as an ambassador before uh, in Zimbabwe, actually before coming here, so people will also call me ambassador. But I would like to use the title Council General here uh, today because uh, uh, I care more about you know the situations in the councilor district. Uh, council General is not like the ambassador. Ambassador talk about you know uh, things in the whole country. Council General focus on the councilor district here in my 10 states. So uh, as of 20 four hours on February the 3rd, the National Health Commission had received 20,433 reports. Is there anything around there? It's okay. It's okay. They received 20,433 reports of confirmed cases and the 425 deaths in 31 provincial level regions on the Chinese mainland. 632 patients had been cured and discharged from hospital. There still remained 23,214 suspected cases and uh, 2,788 patients in serious condition. That's the figure I got. Worldwide, according to the WHO, situation reports on February the 3rd, there are 153 confirmed cases outside of China, among which seven are new. Centers for Disease control and the provision of the U.S., which is CDC, reported that there are 11 confirmed cases in the United States as of February the 3rd. In our council district on February the 1st, a university students in Massachusetts, in Boston, uh, has been diagnosed as a first Massachusetts resident with a new coronavirus. Yesterday, I personally traveled to Boston and uh, met with uh, Martin Mien, I hope I pronounced his name right, president of UMass, who is his uh, equipment. And we are glad to learn that uh, the situation of the students has been improving. And it's now steadily recovering from the coronavirus infection. Uh, our council has been in close communication with the local governments in the council district. By the way, I have 10 states in my council uh, district, including six from the New England area and the state of New York, the state of New Jersey, the state of Pennsylvania, and uh, Ohio. Yesterday, I met with Governor Baker in Boston, and we shared, we talked a lot of shared information on how should we work together to deal with uh, this outbreak. outbreak. And uh, Today, is, he, is she here? Some, some, uh, Not yet, yeah. And uh, also, oh, yeah. we also uh, keep the close contact with uh, Governor Comer's office here in New York and, uh, in getting information and uh, sharing the measures, what we should do to deal with uh, this disease. 
Now, uh, the prevention and control of the outbreak is China's top priority and the most important work for now. People's well-being always comes first. President Xi Jinping chaired a special meeting of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the Communist Party of China, CPC, Central Committee on the Outbreak on January the 25th. That was the first day of this Lunar New Year, entrusted by him. President, uh, Premier Li Keqiang visited Wuhan on the 27th to inspect the novel coronavirus prevention and control efforts. The Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the Communist Party of China Central Committee yesterday held the second, second meeting on novel coronaviruses. Xi Jinping pointed out that the most crucial task for the moment is to execute arrangements to the details and the court for prompt and resolute actions in containing the spread of the epidemic. The Chinese government so far has taken the most strict and comprehensive measures and will continue to resolutely make more make make sure that all those measures are effectively impl uh, implemented in prevention and control. So there are a few measures I'd like to uh, briefly introduce to you. Number one is uh, mobilization. We have uh, mobilized uh, all the resources in China and uh, established the all round the multi layered prevention and control system, folks on Wuhan and uh, Hubei. So, central government, local government, government officials from all levels have been mobilized to put um, the prevention and uh, control efforts in the top priority. That's a major job right now. And uh, the, there is a, a mechanism, mechanism, a national joint prevention and control mechanism has been put in place immediately after the outbreak. Number two is all the strict measures. Uh, you've heard lots of uh, things happening there, like the uh, lockdown of Wuhan and uh, some other cities, and also um, transport restriction, extending the spring festival holidays uh, for maybe 10 days or even two weeks, according to uh, you know the measures taken in different places, postponing school openings, cancellation of these gatherings. You know, this is a holiday season. There are lots of uh, get-togethers. And close of public venues, personal tracking and the management, temperature detection on those airports, uh, train stations, and everywhere. Uh, if uh, people found some people with abnormal temperature, they could be uh, sent to hospital for medical observation. Number three, uh, we have uh, mobilized uh, a lot of resources, uh, resources like the uh, government uh, have allocates like four billion U.S. dollars uh, to deal with this, and uh, six thousand medical workers have been sent from different parts of China to Hubei province to Wuhan to support. Uh, you heard about these uh, new facilities and two hospitals uh, under construction. One is now ready to uh, to host the patients. It's called the uh, Huosensan. I think it's a start to uh, receive patients. This hospital was built or has been built in 10 days uh, with 1,000 beds. Uh, 1,400 doctors have been sent uh, from the army into this hospital. Another hospital called the Lei Sunshan Hospital will be ready in, in this week. That hospital is even bigger, uh, which has uh, like uh, 1,500 beds. Yeah. There are other facilities under construction. And the number four, we have launched a campaign of uh, health uh, knowledge education. Uh, this is uh, not an easy battle. 
So everybody must participate. Rather than rely on the protection offered by the government, they should protect themselves. Uh, they should follow. We will educate them to, to try to stay uh, at home, not to going around, to, you know, keep a personal hygiene and to do whatever they can to secure their safety, to help. This is a quite effective, especially in those uh, uh, countryside or areas of weakness in public health. And the number five, we have uh, taken great efforts to prevent the academic from flowing out of the country. Ever since the outbreak of the uh, uh, epidemic, China has taken highly responsible attitude actively engaged in international cooperation. China has promptly informed the WHO and the relevant countries and regions, including the United States, of the epidemic situation. In addition to sharing information such as genetic sequences of the new virus at the first time, China has invited experts from WHO, Hong Kong, Macau, and the Taiwan regions to do field study in Wuhan. Chinese embassies and the consulates aboard have also been in close communication with the governments of the host countries, keeping them informed out of the informed of the outbreak and the Chinese prevention and the control efforts. Welcome, Linda. Uh, she's from the govern governor's office of New York. Yes, welcome. So the above mentioned measures are showing positive effects, like uh, the mortality rate, as now we know, it's around uh, 2.1 percent, which is much lower uh, than other effect, uh, 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 other diseases like SARS, like Ebola, like all those, and uh, also numbers of recovered case is increasing, is also rising, and it has surpassed uh, the death. Those were the good signs, and we are also doing an intensive uh, research in finding the, uh, uh, the drugs to deal with this, and also the vaccine, and uh, certain progress have been uh, achieved. There are many others. In my consulate general, we pay close attention to the epidemic situation and uh, we issue relevant reminders in a timely manner through our website, WeChat public account, and our Instagram account. Now see, we got an Instagram account here. You can uh, become our... Uh, we strengthen counselor work related to the academic. The counselor deploys more manpower to answer the citizen's inquiry for help. And we also increase the frequency of disinfection of the visa office. People are still traveling. They come to apply for the visa. We scientifically control and guide the flow of applicants. Here, those are the jobs we do. Uh, in case of the, in case of the, uh, the travel ban, you know, there are lots of changes. Uh, we thought the mic got a problem, so we dispatch different groups of people to the airport and uh, just to be there uh, to help those uh, Chinese travelers if they encounter any kind of problem. Yeah. Well, China are bravely fighting the virus. People from the United States and all over the world are offering massive support in preventing and uh, controlling this outbreak. Uh, you heard about uh, uh, our spokeswoman is a comment on US uh, aid, but uh, that's from the government point of view. Here, I have this number. Large multinationals such as Microsoft, Dell, Boeing, L'Oreal, and many others, they have donated 
you know, from those companies, $1.4 million in cash and items to Chinese Red Cross and the Hubei province. Johnson & Johnson has initiated a vaccine development and will provide antiviral medicines to China for investigational use. Uh, MBA has made an announcement to donate uh, 10 million uh, worth of RMB aid to China. In the past week, my council has received numerous emails and phone calls asking for ways to donate and help. According to uh, uncompleted statistics, overseas Chinese, in, I mean the Chinese community in our council district have donated up to now around 400,000 US dollars worth of uh, goods and uh, around 2 million masks, 27,000 protective suits and other medical supplies to China. China Central Chamber of Commerce, as well as companies like Amarac, uh, Frontage Laboratories in Philadelphia have also donated cash and items to Chinese hospitals and uh, charity organizations. The logistic people have also offered tremendous help in the delivery of those relevant items. Now here I want to mention a doctor from uh, uh, Columbia University, Dr. Lipkin, who has been known as a various hunter. He, he went to China at the invitation of the Chinese uh, uh, university, Xunyanshan University, and uh, this is his second time to go to China to help. He went to China when SARS broke out many years ago and uh, offered uh, tremendous help is now still in Beijing, and uh, let me take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude and uh, appreciation to American people and the people of so many countries in the world for their valuable support to China. We also want to see the early arrival of the uh, help from American government. Epidemic prevention is a challenge for all human beings. The fight against the coronavirus outbreak shows again that we live in the shared community where all of us are interlinked and interdependent. I believe that in the face of a catastrophe, people around the world should put aside the differences and unite together. Humanity will eventually overwhelm calamity. As U.S. former President Franklin Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is the fear itself. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. Thank you. That's my briefing. Now I'm ready to take a few questions. Thank you, last point. Uh, so uh, we have about half an hour for the Q&A session. So, uh, Plenty of opportunities for questions. Uh, as uh, Rogers, um, uh, Dec. Um, thank you, Dr. Wang, or Council General Wang, as you guided us. Uh, hi, it's Echo from Reuters. I have a couple questions. Could you um, share with us a little bit the considerations from uh, from China regarding allowing disease ex experts from uh, WHO and CDC America? to go to China, what are the concerns around that? And what are the um, guidelines for the members of uh, these disease experts? Mm -hmm. And um, another question, um, is there any direct conversations going on between China and the US regarding the uh, travel bans or travel restrictions that have been put into place? Thank you. Now for the first one, uh, we have been working very closely with the international community in sharing the information and uh, the joint efforts to deal with this uh, disease. 
As you know, uh, this disease has no boundaries, and uh, we need to work together to deal with this. So we are looking forward. Uh, we have invited uh, the experts uh, from WHO and many other countries, regions, to come to China to actually to the field, to do the field study, uh, trying to find out you know, the ways, how should we uh, cope with that more effectively. And the uh, US, US government has expressed uh, the willingness to join to send experts to join the WHO. Uh, so we are looking forward for their arrival. We are very thankful for this. And for the second one, I think we need to follow the guidance of the WHO. Uh, everybody knows the uh, comments or uh, I should, uh, advice from the WHO's uh, director general. He went to China himself, he had meetings with our leaders, he went to a uh, study, and uh, his conclusion was that China has done tremendously uh, to cope with this uh, disease. He is quite confident, he has a fully confidence that China is going to win this battle. He spoke highly about all the efforts uh, China has put into uh, uh, the prevention and the control. And he, in the meantime, he says this is a time for the international uh, community to join uh, hands to work together. He does not recommend the uh, travel ban or trade ban uh, in any uh, sense. So I think we, that's a very good uh, uh, guidance we should follow. Thank you. Okay, second question, uh, Serena from Fox News and Fox Business. Thank you for doing this presser for us. Uh, I'm Serena from Fox Business. Larry Cutler just told Fox Business this morning that it's true that exports in phase one deal would take longer because of the coronavirus. So my question is, will the coronavirus affect China's ability to purchase American farm goods or any other parts of the trade agreements? The hmm. um, second question is, the U.S. says its action to prevent the virus from spreading follows standard scientific protocol and are quote-unquote prudent in nature. Do you continue to suggest the U.S. government is creating panic? Thank you. Okay, for the first one, I really don't know. I hope uh, the first one deal, which we tried very hard to, to get there, uh, will not be affected. Uh, so uh, let's wait and see how you know quickly this could be uh, over for this uh, disease. And uh, for your second uh, question, can you repeat that again? Say, uh, um, the U.S. says action to uh -huh. prevent the virus from spreading. Yes. Follow standard scientific protocols yes. and are prudent in nature. Yes. And we know that um, from the Chinese side, there's been comments about U.S. government yeah. is creating panic. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, as I said before, the WHO has uh, issued uh, this guidance and uh, asking you know, countries not to overreact. Uh, uh, he rejects any ban on travel and the trade. Uh, so we, would, uh, uh, we understand all the measures taken by U.S. and many other countries, uh, but I think still we should follow the guidance from the WHO and not to, you know, uh, to, to issue uh, measures stricter than that or overreact. Okay, the third question, uh, Christina from ABC. Hi, Christine Theodore, ABC News. Mm -hmm. The World Health Organization has widely praised China's response mm -hmm. for identifying the pathogens, the yeah. sequence of the genetic disease, communicating that effectively yeah. in the response. Yeah. President Xi yesterday said in, in the meeting that this was a major test for China's systems and capacity for governance. Yeah. So it's been interpreted that he's admitting to shortcomings, or I was hoping you would be able to provide some clarifications as to what challenges he's referring to specifically and how difficult every, the next steps are in your response. Yeah, you have seen, you know, the, uh, in the, all the response 
efforts we have been trying uh, very hard to mobilize all the possible resources. We want our government officials to do the job, you know, try their best to do the job, but uh, some of them were not doing very well. And you have seen, you know, the lady in charge of that uh, uh, Hubei province area. There is a small city there. She got fired. Uh, I mean, maybe two hours after I saw her from the, uh, uh, the TV, she could not answer the questions asked by the monitoring group, simple questions. So if people there, government officials, are not doing their job, they will be replaced. Yes. Uh, question. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, what uh, you're doing to support Chinese students here in the United States who might have concerns about the virus? And um, could you talk a little bit about the Princeton and Cornell quarantines? Or uh, excuse me, from AP, right? Yeah, AP Associated Press. That's yes, right. yes. Uh, my council district has a large number of uh, Chinese nationals, either as a tourist or students or people or business people doing business here. Last year in New York alone, we got uh, 1.12 million uh, travelers coming as a tourist. And in my council district, the student number goes up to uh, 130,000. It's one third of the whole student's population from China studying in the United States. Uh, so we have been attaching great importance uh, to you know, inform them uh, to get ready to help once you know, the help is needed. Uh, when the uh, case in Massachusetts uh, occurred, I personally went there yesterday, so I, was, uh, I, I got a meeting with the president, and I was so happy to learn that uh, the student, his condition is very stable, uh, he did the right thing, right, he came back, he went to Wuhan, he came back and uh, found himself uh, uncomfortable. So he went to the clinic, he, uh, he, he seeked the uh, uh, medical help. So right now, he's now in quarantine, uh, and uh, you know, I think uh, the school and the Massachusetts State and Boston City uh, they have been doing a very good job. On the one hand, the students' quarantine uh, has been quite properly arranged, and uh, number two, the, uh, there is no panic there. I don't see many people wearing masks or working on the streets, and the, all the uh, get-together, I mean, those things are still going on. I only spend a day there in Boston, but I feel, you know, restaurants, coffee shops, and uh, people are traveling with no masks. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, I send my I send my greetings. I we, I wish him, you know, to recover very quickly through uh, the help. The keep the privacy of the students. I I could not phone him. We follow this, uh, you know, uh, measures taken by the uh, university. They've been doing a very good job. I should speak very high. Remember from the last role here? Yeah, a CBS, a right? yeah. yeah, ABC. 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 Can you just speak about the global response and reaction and people's concern to what's been going on? And, and how can you tell people to, to calm down a little bit? Yeah, and this is uh, uh, since the outbreak, people all over the world have showed their concern. Many countries have taken measures uh, in prevention and control, uh, but I think the guidance from the WHO is very, very important. We understand the measures from different countries uh, taken since the outbreak, but uh, I believe all those measures uh, should be on science, scientific basis, and uh, you know, rely on the facts and the many others. So we will do whatever we can, and to uh, you know, to control uh, this disease from spreading. Actually, China's been doing everything we can to prevent this. Right now, very few cases, 
uh, I should say another way, most of the cases that happen are in China. Very few cases in compare with those uh, influenza and uh, in compare with many other uh, similar diseases like Ebola, like you know, uh, SARS and, and uh, H1N1. Do you see the numbers getting higher in the deaths? Uh, actually, yeah, the numbers are still going up. It's not the peak yet from, you know, the, uh, the numbers I, I saw, I got. But you see, on the other hand, uh, people got cured. This numbers are also, or discharged from the hospitals, numbers are also going higher. You, you see the uh, influenza here is a lot more actually uh, dangerous. Starting from October the 1st, I also read from the media, uh, from October the 1st uh, last year up to now, 19 million people get affected. Lots of people went to hospital and more than 10,000 people died already. That's a lot more scary. Read from New York Times? Um, yes. Thank you, Ambassador Council General. Yeah, your, uh, thank you. <laughs> For the briefing, I, can, I had a follow-up question to uh, something with, that was asked earlier by uh, one, of, one of our colleagues. The, the, you said that there are 100, you, you, there are 130,000 students yeah. in the within the 10 states that yeah. are under your yeah. uh, in yeah. your area, and that um, I just wanted to make sure I understood this correctly. That you said that uh, you your you attached uh, great importance to their well-being. Yeah, well-being, and, and safety. To get, and, for, and, and to get ready to help when help is needed. You mean for the, the console that stands ready to help when help is needed, or that you ask them to help? Oh, uh, both ways. Both ways. This, this, uh, this is something we have to do all together. Now, first of all, we follow very intensively all the information we can get from CDC, from you know the immigration, because those uh, regulations are changing very quickly. So we will uh, make the maximum use of our channel, like we have the WeChat, we, like our, we have our website, we have this uh, Instagram here. We will publish, publish all those informations. And uh, in the meantime, we, we will issue a reminder say, okay, please note that this regulation has been changed, so get ready. So if if you, you are traveling, for example, recently, you need to follow the immigration regulations which has been changed. And for those who uh, are still here, starting there, and we recommend them to, you know, uh, to rethink, maybe reschedule those activities during this spring uh, festival time, lots of people are getting together, you know, having good time parties and all those. So we say, uh, can you, yeah, you decide whether you want to delay that or to avoid the mass uh, getting together. So those were the jobs we do. And uh, for the students who got affected there, I personally went there uh, to see the President of the UMass expressed our concern and care, and also I met the governor, I met the representative of Boston mayor, and to see you know how we can work together. Lots of things we have been doing. Yes, huh? uh, I'm sorry. Ida from uh, NBC. Hi there. Are you um, You mentioned that in Massachusetts, people are not wearing masks and they're not panicking, mm -hmm. which you said was a good thing. Here in New York, if mm -hmm. you go to Flushing, or mm -hmm. you go to Chinatown, mm -hmm. you'll see lots of people wearing masks. Yes. What would you say to these people who are very afraid? I think we need to deal with this on a scientific uh, basis. Uh, I think the CDC the instructions are very important. I think you know the information we can get from uh, New York city or New York State is very, very important. I can't say you should not wear a mask or, or something. That's your freedom, right? Uh, you can wear the mask, but uh, I think, you know, uh, you should follow the instructions from the professional organization. 
Hope to wait uh, sub China morning house. Uh, thank you. I have two questions. Yes. Uh, first, uh, China has allowed the U.S. to send a group of experts to China. Yeah. But can you tell us more details about how they're going to work together? Uh, will the U.S. experts get directly involved? Uh, will they be able to view and define data of human-to-human -human transmission? Or will they be allowed to go to Hubei and collect the samples? Um, second question is, uh, China has reiterated that it will be transparent. Uh, but China has uh, shared only the virus gene uh, genetic sequence. So can you tell us any details about what you mean by being transparent and to what extent? Thanks. Okay, for the first one, as I said before, we really we welcome uh, American experts uh, to go to China, join the WHO to go to China and work with Chinese scientists. Uh, I don't know the details, you know, how they would work. They're not yet, uh, there yet. I think uh, this will be arranged uh, properly uh, as, uh, you know, the international team working together to deal with this. This should be no problem. And for the second, since the outbreak, China has been uh, releasing uh, information in a timely, transparent, uh, and uh, responsible way. Uh, I don't know when you say we only issue the, uh, the, the genetic sequence. I think we've issued a lot more than just that. Uh, we, are, we are releasing the information collected daily to update all the information there. And we will continue to do that, for sure. Uh, Brendan from Wilson here. Yeah, I just want to follow up a little bit. You've been pointing to the uh, WHO guidance, obviously, on the, the travel restrictions. I'm just wondering, obviously, because um, you know China's acted so aggressively domestically, shutting down um, yeah. uh, many of the cities in the Bay province. Um, you know, does that make it more difficult to make this case to other countries that travel restrictions aren't aren't necessary because China's acting so aggressively internally? You mean the, making this travel in China more difficult? Right. In, in other words, China's used a lot of travel yes. to try yes, to contain, sure, contain sure. the outbreak. But, yes. But the you know the other side is this is is pointing to the WHO yeah. message, a yeah. message saying that uh, travel restrictions internationally aren't aren't necessary. So I guess I'm just wondering, does that complicate you know the message that you're trying to, to to give to these other countries, or are they pushing back and saying, well, look? Here's what China's doing, you know, I mean, uh, what are you hearing from some of those? Most of the cases are happening in China, right? So it's uh, necessary for China to take the most uh, strict and comprehensive measures just to control the spreading. And that's the urgent thing uh, to prevent those, you know, diseases from uh, transmitting to other countries. So it's a kind of sacrifice for Chinese people. You don't want to stay at home. You want to travel to other places. You don't want to cancel your, your get-togethers. Those were the things, you know, the whole country are working together. Uh, my son has been staying at home for a long time already. And, uh, you know, everybody must do something for the prevention and uh, uh, control. This is not a time for travel. This is a time to kill the disease, uh, you know, to prevent it from spreading. This is an urgent time. But internationally, I think uh, the WHO's uh, guidance is so important. Uh, we want to prevent this disease from uh, spreading, but in the meantime, I think we need to adopt uh, a scientific way to deal with it, be reasonable, be calm, and uh, not cause any panic or disturbance for the uh, international or people-to-people -people exchange internationally. Great. Yeah, sorry, I had one follow-up question, uh, uh, Dr. Devil. Um, of the 130,000 students that you mm -hmm. that are under uh, in, in your area, have you? attempted to um, find out how many 
come from uh, Hubei or uh, from Wuhan um, and how recently they had been there. Mm -hmm. and so do you have numbers you can share about that? Yeah, that's a very important question. We have been trying uh, our, uh, our best to find out. We want to have this information, especially those students who have been to Hubei provinces recently. Uh, but uh, it's not that easy. We say, please report to us if you have been there. We uh, put this you know, through many channels. We want them to report. And uh, we get in touch with schools in my uh, district. Other schools we say, please let us know if you have people who have been to Hubei. Uh, we got a few feedback. But in the meantime, you as schools, you have your regulations. That's a student's privacy, you know. Uh, I, I don't want to say they're not cooperating, but they say well, they have to follow the regulations, not to leak any uh, privacy things of the students to us. So I don't have the total number of that. I, 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 even if I have, it's not complete, I should say. But good thing is, we only got one case in Massachusetts. Confirm the case. All the schools are taking very good care of the students. I think uh, they've been doing a wonderful job. Just a follow-up question on the cover restrictions. Is there, any, uh, is there any direct conversation between US and China on that, or are they discussing through a third party? Uh, we believe, you know, maybe the U.S. reaction is a little, you know, over, uh, especially the evacuation uh, of the diplomats from, you know, Wuhan. I personally don't quite get it, you know. It's not the practice of uh, Chinese diplomats. Uh, I myself did a few evacuations. And uh, at a difficult time or something like that, the diplomats of China will be sent in rather than being pulling out, because you, you might get people there who need you. So diplomats will be the last to leave, not the first. That's our practice. I don't know. You know, since I'm a council general here, I just really don't know, you know, what is happening in those high-level conversations about that. But I believe, you know, you can uh, maybe get the information from the spokeswoman or spokesman of the foreign ministry. Okay. Uh, besides the international media, uh, we also have some uh, uh, media, local media from the Chinese community here. So it's uh, kind of, it's uh, from, uh, uh, from Xinjiang. Because uh, uh, yesterday there is a case happening in Chinatown of Asian American women who are wearing a mask who was beaten by a guy. So there's a concern spreading in Chinese community that maybe there's a hate crime uh, targeting Chinese people who are wearing masks. Um, do you have any comments or any suggestions? Yeah, I really don't want to see this. I expressed my concern to either the governor of Massachusetts who had a meeting or the president of UMass. I say, you know, this, the virus is the enemy, not the Chinese. So I hope that case should not affect the, the normal life and the study of all the Chinese in Boston, in Massachusetts, and uh, in campus. I heard about uh, the story you just mentioned. But I'd like to quote, you know, Dr. Tedros, who is a, uh, who is a director general of WHO. He said, this is a time for facts, not fear. This is uh, the time for science, not rumors. And this is a time for solidarity, not stigma. So I, would, I want to, you know, all the, uh, all the public to get this, uh, get this message. We should unite together internationally to deal with this fatal disease rather than, you know, going on this trade or racial uh, 
issues which should, this should be prevented. Are there any questions? Yeah, I'm sure hi from people's family. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Tom. Well, uh, what measures are we taking to advocate or educate our overseas Chinese, including tourists and uh, you know young students, yeah. to strengthen their confidence to or just reduce their panic on this you know academic intervention? Yes, we have been doing all we can, you know, to, uh, to publish all those informations we gained uh, about uh, China's efforts in prevention and control, about uh, the progress we have achieved, about uh, the WT, uh, WHO's guidance and many others. In the meantime, I think we have this problem now, but there is no need to be panic. On the other side, we also release or publish all those uh, uh, information about the measures taken by other countries on restriction on their travel or the possibility, possibility of the challenges they might encounter. And uh, to let them know they might, you know, uh, encounter those uh, challenges. So be prepared to deal with that. Uh, we've been doing all the things we can, yeah. Yes? Yes. Uh, hello, I'm with China Daily. And my question that, I uh, noticed that some report, uh, some media reports that uh, some foreigners ex express their uh, racial prejudice towards uh, some Chinese or, Hispanic, or even Asian. So what's your attitude towards that? I mean, uh, I, I think I, I said before, you know, this this should be prevented. People should be united, should be united together to deal with this disease. Right now, uh, this is not a, a good tendency. We should work together to prevent this. We should condemn this, this prejudice and uh, all those you know hate things. Are you going to provide a number for somebody to call? Yes. Uh, not, you know, not people from the United States because we, we are. You are wearing a mask. But, pe yeah, <laughs> but people from the, you know, people from China uh -huh. that are here that may not communicate well and yes, are yes. feeling bad. Can you provide something in, uh, you know, in Chinese so that they know where to call? Yes, and uh, I, I got this uh, hot number. Uh, Find that one for me. Uh, we got a, a number, 24 hours calling number, not specially for this, but uh, it runs every year. Uh, 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 every day, 24 hours, all year around for emergency call for assistance. And uh, f to prevent this from, uh, you know, you know the, the, we, we have added another one, the number. You want the number? Here? Yeah, you can just say it, so... Okay, let me get the number. I will read that to you. I can't remember, I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> okay. It's 212-695-3125. In Chinese, 212 we have increased the manpower to make sure all the calls will be received and handled properly. And if you cannot get through, we got another one for the global emergency call uh, in China. It's uh, one, two, three, oh, eight. One, two, three, oh, eight. Yao er, san lin ba re xian. This is uh, you know, uh, a number you can call. Uh, whenever and wherever you are, or you have a problem, you want to get the, uh, assistance or help, you can call from anywhere at any time, all year round, 24 hours. Uh, yeah, Council General Wang, I'm from the China Media Group. Yeah. Uh, first, a follow-up question. 
say so you mentioned the con consulate general has made a lot of efforts to brief people with the latest information on the virus. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any contingency plan actually uh, to cover the Chinese who are traveling, studying, or doing business here in, you, in your council district? Yeah. If there's any like uh, they are if, uh, if infected with the disease or there's any hate crime against them? This is the first question. And the second question is, you just mentioned that Professor Lipkin from the uh, Columbia University has traveled to China to help combat the disease. Um, so we, we know there are a lot of other professional organizations and universities here in the council district. So uh, is the council general in contact with other experts uh, to uh, for them to support China, help China through all possible channels, or uh, are you making arrangements for more experts to go to China? Thank you. Yes, uh, we've been trying to you know to 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 get uh, all the necessary help uh, from international community. And Dr. Lipkin went to China at the invitation of the, uh, the Sun Yat-sen University in Guangzhou. He actually went there. We're very, very grateful. I don't know whether he's coming back today or not. He himself is subject to the quarantine upon, you know, coming back. And uh, well, also, uh, I also met two professors from Harvard University and uh, seeking for advice. Uh, I will try to get more uh, you know, help from all the channels. So if you get any resources, I'd like to to be informed so we can get in touch. We are funding, trying to get all this uh, professional help. U.S. is very strong in uh, in controlling this. Your system is very strong. You've got the wonderful experts. So that's why I say we're looking forward for the experts from the U.S. to go uh, to China and working with the Chinese scientists. Okay, last two questions. Uh, here, Times. Um, yes, uh, for Americans and others uh, in your district who want to um, donate, make donations, yes. monetary donations, yeah. or uh, yeah. medical supplies, yeah. or whatever, do you have? What do you recommend for them? Do they? Do you have a list of charities or, or agencies that will accept those donations? Or yeah, how, yeah. How do they do it? Yeah, the uh, the what, you you can get this information on the website of Chinese government very easily, and we also publish the, this information on our website here. And normally, it's go through the Red Cross in China, in Hubei provinces. They are the uh, uh, the organization uh, doing this job, being diagnosed, you know, by the Chinese government to do this job. Uh, and uh, the council here, we will uh, do our best, uh, try our best to facilitate the contact uh, and the shipping of all those things to China. Okay, last question, uh, Eva from Rosie. Um, is there any estimate? Uh, made by the Chinese authorities about uh, when the daily infection rate would start di diminishing? <laughs> this is not what I can answer. You know, we have to listen to the scientists. And I did heard about uh, Zhong Nansen's comments. Zhong Nansen is a very famous uh, scientist. He said oh, we might need another 10 to 14 days before we reach the peak, but you can you can check this uh, his comments yeah from the uh, from the website i don't get this personal you know information okay. <laughs> 14 days are made, uh, the estimate made by his comments i just checked before i came in you know i saw a news in chinese there he's talking about that but i i don't know whether it could be true or not because uh, right now as everybody knows the uh, before Wuhan was shut down, the city was shut down, uh, lots of people left already for Spring Festival. So the, uh, it's very difficult to get this accurate number. They're everywhere in China. So this is really a, not an easy job, you know. But, but we're trying our best to bring this down as quickly as possible.
I hope all of you will be supporting us. Um, I want to, uh, before I end this, I really want to express my sincere gratitude to all the sympathy and the concerns from uh, American companies, American peoples, of course, from the goodwill of American governments. Really looking forward uh, to the uh, early arrival of the help from your government. Let's work together. China is going to win this battle with your strong support. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's the end of the press conference. Uh, thank you, Ambassador uh, Wong Ping. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.